What's good in the shop? Is there anything that you should buy? And what should you definitely avoid? Let's find out and don't forget to like and subscribe. The resource bundles are still credits, so don't buy them. In the tank section, we start off with this bundle of the T-56 and the MX-31 Pro Tape. Now, the T-56 isn't really a good choice because it is outclassed by something like a Type 57, making this vehicle very pointless to obtain, even though it is quite decent. And the MX-30 is a Tier 9. Now, the problem of Tier 9 vehicles is, while the MX-31 Pro Type is a good vehicle, especially for a Tier 9 medium tank, there are completely different vehicles at Tier 9 that are quite a lot worse than this one it is still a tier 9 and tier 9 very much does suffer from the same problems as tier 7 suffers from tier 8 is the main credit grinding tier that's where you have the best credit to damage ratio and then at tier 10 you have a lower credit coefficients but you have a lot more damage so you're kind of stuck in the middle between the two and tier 9 isn't generally very popular either however the mx30 first prototype is still a good vehicle only has 310 alpha damage though, so eh, that, that's the only big downside. The third armor is very good, it has 10 degrees of gun depression, and it is relatively mobile. So if you are looking for a essential fun vehicle that has no point grinding credits, and you have a lot of money to waste on this game, this can be a very useful bundle. However, these are not primary vehicles that you absolutely should have in your garage. And obviously, furthermore, these include camouflages and avatars. I myself ascribe a value of zero to those items. And then you have times five boosters that are locked to both of the vehicles, again, diminishing their value quite significantly. And then we have these epic boosters right here that can be helpful, but there's only 25 of these. And these are really best used, especially the crew XP and the free XP. They are best used for standard vehicles. I don't personally recommend this bundle. It includes two vehicles that are good, but they're sort of not quite there where they should be. They're not in the sort of top 10 of things you should buy and given that the most of you won't buy a lot of premium tanks these are very much outside of that range then the triple menace here is essentially just the meme bundle i mean it's it's three tier fives and they're all premiums which means you can't sell them for gold so and it also costs four thousand gold it also includes camel containers this is a funny little joke to buy if you don't know what to do with your gold but is it a good bundle yeah not really Normally, the 5.5k gold bundles are awesome. However, this one, the 500,000 credits, has been swapped for something even worse than credits in a bundle like this, and that is crates. Not very good at all. Now, the times fives, once again, are locked. Camo avatar, no value. And the Panzer 58 right here, well, it's one of the worst vehicles that you can put into a 5.5k bundle like this, when there is things like the Jagdtiger, like the Lurvin like the T-34, that are great vehicles. Even though it doesn't have the abysmal penetration of the majority of Tier 8 mediums, it still is just a very questionable vehicle. It doesn't have any armor whatsoever. The gun's not really that great. Mobility is fine enough, but it's not the fastest in the world. And to be fair, if you want to grind credits, you're much better off with a heavy tank or the Jagdtiger 88 in that regard, because the Panzer 58, I mean... It's significantly inferior to something like a Centurion 5.1 or a Chimera. So even though the bundle price is great, the bundle content here is not the best. But at least it does include 30 days of premium. And if you do like clumsy medium tanks and you want to challenge yourself, for example, like a Lance and C or AMX M4 Ravioli, then this fits right into that slot as well. Then the double impact. And uh, this vehicle is pointless. I mean... Here's the thing, the WZ-121 GFT kind of makes all of these vehicles obsolete and pointless, so uh, buying any other than that thing eh, kind of doesn't make sense. Now, Tankenstein, it is an interesting vehicle, it doesn't even have a crew, so you can't get crew damage because there isn't anybody inside, I don't know how that works, but then again, this is a fantasy game. It also has a choice of two different guns, one being a T-29 gun and one being a higher alpha damage 460 alpha damage gun. However, the T-29 gun has a much better mantlet than this one, so you will be able to be penned through the turret using the big gun, but with the T-29 gun, you can't be penned as easily through the turret. 
This is a fun novel vehicle. It has a Tiger P hull and also very similar Tiger P uh, frontal armor. It's a novelty act rather than a good credit grinding premium tank. Now, if you are looking for that specific novelty act, it's 3.5k gold here with equipment, which I love to see. Wargaming started to include more equipment in these bundles. It often was quite rare in the past, but now I see more and more that there is equipment actually in these bundles now 3.5k regularly my value for a tier 7 is 3k so having 500 extra for the equipment i think is okay and this bundle here called the rampant raiders is also still here consisting of the batch of barask and the m41d now the barask is a good vehicle at tier 8 However, it is quite specific. It has terrible DPM, it has terrible penetration, and no armor whatsoever. And even though it can be played to a very high level, it isn't the best credit grinding vehicle out there due to its abysmal penetration. So essentially, it is a great tank that works really well for a specific kind of player. If you don't want to grind credits mainly with this vehicle, it is incredibly fun, but it isn't your main credit grinding vehicle at any point, really. But in terms of its performance, it is in the upper end at tier 8 medium tanks. Well, it's more of a light tank than a medium, really. But anyway, the M41D, it is a real light tank. It is a tier 7, which kind of, again, makes it a bit pointless. But this tier 7 is very enjoyable and very fun. So this right here is the fun bundle. It's not necessarily the most useful bundle. You're not going to get the most credits out of it. But it is a very fun bundle right here. So If that's what you're looking for, if... No armor isn't something that you have a problem with, then go for it. But if you're a very beginner player, don't get something like this. I never really talk about the esports section, but is there anything good down here if you have a lot of these tournament tokens that you can also earn in raiding battles? Well, the T77 is a great vehicle. So if you get enough points to get the T77, that's probably the pick I would choose. The Rain Fearless, I mean, it's interesting, it's unique, but... Again, it's overpriced. It's not that special. It's only a camouflage, really. The only thing that matters here is the tank performance. And I do think the T-77 is the more widely usable vehicle than the Lorraine. So the T-77 is the better choice here. Don't forget to open your free containers once they're there because boosters are always useful and you don't then have to buy them. But remember, the most useless thing you can obtain in this game is camo containers so don't do that and then we have this new large collection of containers which includes a lot of containers for different vehicles now twenty-five thousand gold is obviously a lot for the chance of well, very little to be honest buying things like this is just merely a waste of money so don't do that at all just like how lock boxes are a complete and utter waste of money as well and it's for the caro 45t which isn't the best to attend out there so that's already pointless but then it is also in these lock boxes which are often worse than crates and then i don't know what wargaming seems to have lost the plot because you can now gamble for quests which just can someone please tell me in the comments what other things that Wargaming is going to lock behind gambling next? Because I'm really curious if eventually you're going to have to start gambling for equipment on your tank as well. And then we have the mass container that's still down here. It doesn't seem to be going away at any time. So this is probably now just a permanent fixture. And uh, there's nothing really of value in here most of the time. And then there is also the WZ-122TM draw. Now, this vehicle obviously being inferior to the Chimera, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to buy this, especially not gambling for it, because if you look at the price here, it's not going to look any good here. This is just world of gambling at this point. I, I don't know what to say anymore. I don't really know how long I'm going to even make these shop reviews, because quite honestly, every week I now have to say the same thing over and over and over again, with very little in terms of great bundles. They are there, for example, the Barask and the M31D bundle, they are there, but they are getting rarer and rarer by the moment. 
Then there is a new event called the Raiding Sprint, which you can get, say, gambling container. It just see, it's just more gambling, because why not? However, you can get things like these snippets for the season as well, and also free XP. So if you are playing Raiding Battles, I can highly recommend doing this event as well.